Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. Uh, unfortunately, the weather for the next really week or so doesn't look too good to actually get out and take a photograph with my equipment. But a few people have asked, uh, what am I actually using and why now recently? So uh, I thought I'd take this chance while it's not currently raining to get out and uh, tell you about that. So let's start, first things first, it's the telescope. Um, I'm currently using a refractor, which is a Skywatcher Esprit 120 ED Super Apo triplet. Um, now, a refracting type telescope basically uses lenses, uh, rather than other types of telescopes, such as a reflector, which uses, as you'd expect, mirrors, uh, and catadioptrics, which use a combination of mirrors and lenses. Now, the reason that I've settled on a refractor as kind of like my dream scope um, has actually just been through experience. So, over the years, I've had the chance through buying and selling used telescopes uh, to try out a lot of different designs. And to be honest, of all the types that I've used, the ones that have given me the most enjoyment have always been refractors. And I think a lot of the reason for that is down to just the stability of the system. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you purchase one, and it arrives in good collimation and you look after it, it's gonna stay that way for a long, long time, likely forever. Uh, there should be no real reason that it's going to move unless it gets jarred or knocked about quite severely. With other telescope designs like reflectors uh, and catadioptrics, you are gonna to have to perform collimation from time to time. And while that doesn't bother a lot of people, and it's not actually a difficult task if you have the right tools to get perfect, uh, it's just one more thing to worry about that I thought I could do without really and I'd like to focus on just taking the images rather than keeping everything perfectly in tune. So I think basically that's why a refracting type telescope, a quality one, uh, fits really well for me and so far it's been my favourite telescope to use. I have basically no complaints whatsoever about it. So the next thing to talk about perhaps is uh, this, which is the field flattener. Um, depending on your telescope design, you're gonna have to use an end piece of glass basically, which is gonna be the last thing that light passes through on its way to your camera sensor. So that's gonna vary from being a coma corrector on a reflector, perhaps a reducer flattener on a schmidt cassegrain or like this, uh, just a standard field flattener. Sometimes these are coupled with also becoming a reducer too. The next thing along the imaging train that we have is these. So this one's a spacer that actually comes with this camera, which we'll get to in a moment. And the one behind it is actually a filter drawer, which I just recently purchased, which also acts as a spacer. In fact, to fit this one, the ZWO to a ZWO camera, you simply remove the 21 mm spacer and replace it with this 21 mm thick filter drawer. So it, it goes perfectly. The reason we use spacers is because as mentioned before, the field flatteners, coma correctors, etc., they all tend to have an optimum distance uh, which they give the best performance, as in pinpoint stars and a well-corrected field. Uh, in this case, it's 55 millimeters. Um, and in, in fact, you'll find in most cases, it generally is about 55 millimeters that things are uh, made to work at. The reason for that is because a lot of these are designed with DSLRs in mind, which typically have a body to sensor depth of 44 millimeters, and then you're going to use a T ring, which is generally 11. Um, so the need to make it so it'll work with that type of camera design, any shorter uh, wouldn't offer enough back focus to be usable in that scenario. So if I just touch upon the filter draw for a moment now, uh, the reason that I'd like to use this is because it's going to enable me to quickly change between using just a luminance filter for taking broadband targets such as galaxies and reflection nebula, and then I can quickly swap it out just by ch changing one of these drawers and use my nebula filter for taking photographs of emission nebula. Uh, without having to unscrew everything, uh, which is generally just a, a mess and you don't, you don't want to be doing it if you can avoid it just by simply buying one of those. So further along now we'll come to the camera. Uh, in my case this is an ASI 2600MC Pro. Uh, that's a one-shot colour camera with an APS-C sized sensor. So much like the different telescopes I've had the chance to use, um, it's kind of been the same situation with cameras too. Uh, I've used an awful lot of the ones that are on the market currently and they all have their own merits but the reason that I've actually settled on colour instead of mono um, is basically down to the type of shooting that I like to do. Um, 
I'm not actually trying really for the best possible images. Uh, it's more just about enjoying the experience of being out here and taking photos. So while it is the case that a mono camera is actually going to have a higher image quality ceiling, uh, as in how good of an image can actually be produced, I feel like these modern CMOS colour cameras have really closed the gap recently. Uh, before we move away from the scope and start to talk about the mount a little bit, there's a few more things left that I'd like to uh, touch upon. So, recently I bought this, which is a automated focusing unit. Um, now, it'll only automate focus if your software actually supports that. Um, you can still use it manually using the drivers and that is still a nice way to do things without having to come outside in the freezing cold and mess around with the Vinoff mask. Um, but yeah, for me that's actually been something that I've put off for a long time uh, and I kind of wish I hadn't because now that I've got one I really wouldn't want to go back to manually doing it. So one of the last things on the scope to talk about really is this, which is the 50mm guide scope, uh, which is actually a finder scope. Just a standard Skywatcher one, um, with an adapter wound into the back so that I can actually shove in a, a 1.25 inch eyepiece sized camera, uh, which in my case is a QHY 5L2 Mono. Um, that's been a really great little guiding setup and I've guided all sorts of telescopes over the years using this exact same rig uh, and it's never really been a problem, so I can highly recommend that as a good solution. There's one more thing to touch upon now before we move on to the mount, and that's this, which is uh, kind of a, a boring piece of equipment, but an absolutely vital one, and that is a dew strap. Um, so basically all types of telescopes, if you live in quite a humid place like I do, uh, are going to be susceptible to dew at some point or another. And just the simple addition of that uh, removes any chance of that happening at any time of the year. It just becomes something that you constantly worried about to you no longer think about it ever again basically uh, which is fantastic and uh, one other advantage of a refractor is it is very easy to keep the dew off on just with the simple dew strap. So finally we're on to the last thing now which is the mount. Uh, in my case it's an EQ6 Pro by Skywatcher. This particular one has been belt modified uh, and I'd highly recommend that to anybody if you've got an older type EQ6 to perhaps get that done. Um, it certainly makes things move very smooth and there's almost no backlash to worry about. If you've got the opportunity though when purchasing a new mount, I'd simply get one that's belt modified from factory these days because there's quite a lot of them that's available that way now uh, and that's certainly be the route that I'd go down where I purchasing again. I suppose one final thing to add about mount selection and such is it's always a good idea to get a mount that's basically way too big. As long as you can still move it around, um, you then never going to be needing a large amount which is a bad situation to find yourself in and uh, with that i think i'll call an end to this video now as i've uh, mistimed what point of the day to do this in and i think i've lost just about all the light now so uh, i hope that helped some of you and uh, if you enjoyed please leave a like maybe comment subscribe uh, and thanks very much for stopping by and looking cheers